Well, you know, every game you make that decision. Every game you look at, okay, here, here's what we want to add. Here's the feature set we want. And now let's build up the engine. Let's keep doing. And then that is, that directly, that decision that you make directly impacts how much work is going into the tech side. With Modern Warfare 3, our big focus was, okay, one of the big things in Modern Warfare 3 from a story standpoint is we're now going into the heart of these major dense urban environments. That's going to require the size and scope and length of the levels that you're playing to be much bigger, bigger than we've ever done in a Call of Duty before. So that requires a lot of tech on the back end and upgrading the streaming, upgrading everything that we do that allows us to maintain that high fidelity in graphics, visuals, and audio, maintain that 60 frames per second frame rate because that is key to the Call of Duty experience uh, of being very fast paced, very, very cinematic. Um, so we have to, you know, say, okay, that's what we want to do. So that's where we focus our advancement. If it got to the point of we're like, okay, we want to now go in this direction, a different direction that requires this, this, and this, that's when you're like, okay, well, then we need to do, uh, we need to focus more in this area. I'm sure you're familiar with like the general critique on Modern Warfare 3, like there's fans and there's people who are going to be a, a bit more critical. Um, they claim like a uh, new engine is overdue, uh, graphics are less pretty than the other shooter out there, um, and it basically looks the same like uh, like Lost Modern Warfare games. Uh, what would you uh, say in response to those critics? Well, I think it's most important to look at our design philosophy from Modern Warfare 3. And I mean, at the end of the day, we look at what can we add and what can we build upon to really improve the gameplay experience, the core gameplay um, that you're going to get and the player's going to have. So everything that we add is all focused on improving that uh, and making sure that we're building it out and, and giving you more of an experience than ever before. And, and that's where we focus everything. And then uh, once you get that and nail that, that core gameplay and you're, you're enhancing that and you're improving that for the player, then we look at, okay, now how can we enhance the immersion? And you do things like that by upgrading the tech and the visual engines, upgrading lighting, audio things that give you more situational awareness, because that stuff, while improves the immersion and look and fidelity of the game, most importantly, also directly impacts your gameplay, because now you're more situational aware, you know, you're able to pick out targets better, you're able to just get into the, the game more. One thing that will uh, launch simultaneously with Modern Warfare is, of course, Elite. Yeah. Uh, one question we're getting a lot is that um, players are a little bit afraid uh, how uh, uh, the, you know, the arrival of Elite will uh, affect their gameplay if they're not using Elite. Uh, it, it will not hinder or affect their gameplay at all if they're not using Elite. Elite is a additional service outside the game that allows you to get more out of the game for free that everyone has options to if you want to. So, you know, it's detailed stat tracking, it's the ability to create groups of further customize like who you're playing with and, and, and you know, their information. Um, and then other things like changing your creative class on the fly, you know, remotely and you can push it to the game. But it is in no way the ability to buy advantages in multiplayer or get advantages that the core player doesn't have. You don't have to ever sign up for Elite and you're getting the full multiplayer experience that everyone else is having. One of the things that our members came up with is uh, about objective-based game modes. Uh, they, they claim that um, uh, there's too many people just focusing on their kill-death ratio and not actually focusing on the objectives because uh, for them it might be more beneficial to not go after a flag but stay in cover and get your KD up instead of uh, actually scoring a point for your team. Is that something you're looking at and you uh, would like to fix? Um, of course, whenever you're designing, um, you know, multiplayer, you have to look at every audience that's there. And, and, and especially in objective game types, it's extremely important to us that we're allowing the objective player to be incentivized and rewarded for being an objective player. You still need to some degree the people who are going out and getting kills, but first and foremost, you need to be giving them the tools and the ability to be a better objective player and make sure you're rewarding that more so in an objective game type then you are the guy who is trying to play TDM. So yes, that is definitely something that we're aware of and, and we're looking at when designing. I can't go into detail on multiplayer on specifics about how we're doing that, but it's definitely something we're aware of. In objective modes, it's, it's generally easier to predict spawn points for your enemies. So that's like a big reason that uh, KD players want to play objective modes. Uh, staying on that uh, predictability a little bit, um, would you say it would not uh, benefit the game uh, to let players decide for themselves where they want to spawn? Uh, well, I mean, that, that's a big design feature, uh, you know, and, and whether that's 
how that how will that impact how the match plays out and I mean we balance it a very specific way but we look at you know how we can improve and, and advance and change how spawning works per game type each game uh, so you know I don't think that's a bad idea um, but it, it really goes down to the the details that I can't get into of like the, the specific modes Obviously, Modern Warfare 3 is one of the biggest games out there, so you're bound to have a lot of speculation going on even before you announce anything. How do you feel about it? Like, do you look at it at any, in any way, or does it not interest you? Uh, no, I, I look at all the speculation and rumors because it's just fun most of the time, and I love having people speculate about the game because that means they're interested, that means they're passionate, and that means they want to know more. So it's always great to see people speculate and then like, start pulling it because sometimes you'll see something and you'll be like, that's great, that's a great idea. Let's do that. And then you start pulling from it and letting it inspire and shape your design as a whole. You know, we take it in a lot of ways as another form of feedback. All right. Uh, could you name one of those things that came from, uh, from somebody <laughs> posting something and you guys thought, ah, that's, that's actually really good? Uh, I mean, we, especially with multiplayer stuff, when you see people like speculating things, you're like, oh, you know, we never thought of that, but that, that would be really cool. Uh, and, you know, that's inspired some, uh, you know, some, some tweaks and stuff in multiplayer, but I can't go into detail on that yet. Uh, over the last uh, Call of Duty games, we've seen, uh, like, um, at one point, uh, we saw first a perk, skill streak, stuff like that, and it's become uh, bigger and, and, you know, more of different of them uh, in each installment. Uh, some of our members claim that uh, because of this, teamwork or uh, the value of teamwork has gone down a little bit uh, while it was key in, uh, let's say, a Call of Duty 2 or, Modo, or the first Modern Warfare game. How would you respond to that? Well, from a design philosophy point of view, uh, we're really looking at building up from that Call of Duty 4 base of, you know, how can we get back to that fast-paced, gun-on-gun, infantry-focused combat where it's more about you and your weapon and your loadout and how you're contributing to the game and the team more so than relying on air support. You know, so it should be about you and your weapon getting the majority of your kills and your tactics and relying on the air support and the kill streaks as what they're intended support, not your main way of getting kills. So I completely agree with that. I think that that's, that's extremely important to make sure that, that we're focusing on that and bringing that uh, mentality back of working together as a team, as well as some other cool stuff that I can't get into that we're doing to also encourage that in team-based modes like T TDM and objectives things to uh, you know, incentivize players to play more in that mentality. In Modern Warfare, or in any Call of Duty game for that matter, you're always uh, playing with a highly trained Marine or a soldier or, you know, whatever. Isn't it uh, a nice idea or, um, to, to put a regular guy or even rebel militia in, in the lead? Right. <laughs> well, uh, you know, I, I, I think that is good and why in Modern Warfare 3, we, we like to give you uh, a view of the conflict from different perspectives. So, you know, while sometimes you are boots on the ground, you know, Delta Force and fighting in the streets of Manhattan. Other moments you're playing from different perspectives. You're seeing what it's like to be air support or ground support, but most importantly, you are always just a, a, a guy on the ground as part of a group. You are never you know the leader of a group you're never the captain of the group you're never you know this singular badass guy we always want you to be just one of the guys in the squad who is typically the lowest ranking least skilled guy in it um so yeah i agree um but there are moments that you know you will be playing as these high speed operators as well well obviously since it's one of the biggest games uh, there uh, it's bound to um be subject of piracy, of course. I know it's a, it's a touchy-feely subject right there. But uh, if you look at other publishers, a lot of publishers right now are postponing PC versions until long after the, the, the console versions have shipped yeah. in order to get like maximum sales and then release the risky PC version later. Is that something that you would do in any, at any point in time? Uh, well, I can't speak to what we do in the future, uh, but I mean that hasn't been a discussion for us now, and it hasn't been a discussion for Modern Warfare 3. I think you know piracy is something that happens uh, and, and, you know, obviously everyone looks at how, how can you address it, but uh, the, the philosophy that we're, we try to take and we're taking with Modern Warfare 3 is we don't want to punish or limit or hinder the, you know, the legitimate customer and fan of our game. And that's, that's just not something we're interested in, especially coming out of Modern Warfare 2. We learned a lot about what our PC audience wants and what they're looking for from a PC version of Call of Duty, and we're looking to incorporate as much of that feedback as we can, especially moving forward.